Thomas, and uh, today uh, I would like to uh, speak a little bit about uh, WebSockets topic, uh, which is uh, somehow connected with Django as well. Let me uh, share my screen. Just to... Um, can you see it right now? Yes. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so as I said, today's topic will be WebSockets in Django with uh, channels. Um, basically, um, this is the short agenda for uh, for today. Um, so um, first of all, I would like to um, I would like to talk about uh, comparison uh, in the way uh, between the REST API with uh, HTTP and WebSockets, uh, based on some uh, example that will be uh, presented uh, during this part of uh, of the presentation. And then I would like to move to the channels itself uh, with uh, Django, with or I mean the cooperation the channels with with Django and what. Uh, what um, gives us, uh, what opportunity gives us uh, this uh, channels uh, library from the perspective of uh, Django uh, apps in, in general. And then I would like to move uh, pretty much uh, shortly to the real use case, uh, real life use, use case that I had a chance to work with a uh, couple of years ago. Um, and then I would like to also uh, have a small demo uh, with uh, with channels uh, that will be basically a simple chat application uh, that will present the possibilities and all and and, and the, the the features that channels actually um, provides uh, from the perspective of uh, websocket communication um, yeah, so let me just uh, jump over to this very first uh, part um so rest api with http and versus uh, websockets so um let's uh let's let's um have a uh, let's have a target on the such problem as uh, um real time communication for uh for chat app um this is this is a problem that we uh, encountered and how uh, how we can uh, actually uh, target this one so the specification actually mentions about uh, about exchanging messages in real time or near real time. Um, so, but real, uh, but exchanging messages in real time would be the best uh, the best um, uh, way or the best uh, achievement here. Uh, B directional communication from the perspective of um, users that are actually uh, using this uh, chat app. Uh, we would like to also have uh, um, a feature which uh, which will be called a group chat. So basically, we will uh, we will uh, we would need to have some sort of uh, group, a room with people that might just uh, easily uh, talk to each other. So this is the specification. Um, so the first solution uh, that might come to to, to mind for, for this particular problem would be to use um, REST API uh, with HTTP 1.1. And so basically, uh, based, on this, uh, uh, based on this schema, we would like to have some sort of uh, server with uh, REST API that is available for the, for the users and for the application itself. And uh, each and every user might have a possibility to um, sign up or just enter the room. Let's call it like this, uh, the chat room. Uh, and then uh, once um, the user will enter the room, uh, the user might also have a possibility to send a message. Uh, for this purpose, we would uh, prepare the post um, uh, the post endpoint on our uh, on our uh, API, uh, which will allow user to send the message. And uh, once 
this one is actually in place, we would like to also have the possibility for, for the other user to, to fetch this message, right? So, um, so we would like to introduce the, um, the get uh, endpoint for, uh, for our app, which will be responsible for fetching uh, those messages. Obviously, uh, this will happen for both cases. So basically uh, the same for John. So John might post a message and Mary might just uh, read this message, but it might be also done vice versa. So Mary will also have a possibility to send her message and uh, basically John will be able to read this message as well. Uh, so for this case, we would need to use some sort of database in order to store those messages uh, once they are uh, published. Um, and yeah, this is basically uh, the first way that we might approach. Um, but, and yeah, so this is, this is the very first uh, um, way we can approach this, this problem. Um, so the very first question that we would like, uh, that we would probably encounter would be, uh, is, uh, do I have a new message? So basically, um, once we post the message uh, here, uh, uh, how much time do we actually need or would we need in order to uh, fetch such message? Uh, and uh, if we are actually talking about real-time or near real-time application. so. Uh, there are some uh, ways to um, somehow handle this particular um, this particular problem. So uh, those are uh, HTTP polling um, usages. The very first one uh, is HTTP short polling, which is probably uh, I guess the most um, uh, the most um, straightforward one. So basically, we are actually asking for uh, for the update from uh, from other user uh, without any sort of um, uh, without any sort of break or uh, without any any uh, sort of uh, uh, time uh, time period uh, between the between the requests uh, that actually uh, that actually makes this one this this particular solution very uh, resource greedy. Uh, because we are actually uh, preparing many, uh, we are actually creating many connections due to the number of requests that we are uh, that we are sending to the to the server in order to obtain the message. So this example here uh, is actually presenting a sort of timeline and um, and and log how that might appear. So um, yeah, in 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 very first. Uh, uh, very first uh, request we we are asking for for this cake to be ready and we are receiving we are receiving a message that it's not ready and we need to wait and we are sending this request once again and we are receiving message that it's not ready and finally uh, once we uh, made this a third um, um, request we we actually received that we uh, we we have this cake ready so we are sending those uh, those requests uh, constantly, and uh, there is no uh, there is no like wait time period. I'd say for those. So as I said, that might just uh, uh, actually end up in very resource greedy solution. And short polling is like short polling. Sorry, is actually not that uh, uh, popular solution due to the uh, due to the the fact that uh, it has its on concerns, which uh, which I already mentioned. So, what about uh, next one? Uh, so, HTTP long polling. So, the idea here is to actually have only one connection uh, from one user, and in this particular and with using this particular connection, we are actually waiting for server uh, to. Uh, for for server to to have the answer for uh, to, for us, uh, I mean for uh, by the answer, uh, I mean the the event that we actually uh, receive from the server that contains the message that we are waiting for. So basically, we are somehow doing some sort of subscription uh, uh, for uh, for the event that we are waiting for, 
and we are just waiting for some time to, uh, uh, and uh, after some time period um, or maybe just for the uh, for the sake of this uh, particular example if the event will uh, actually jump in uh, in some um, some point of time we are then we are, uh, the server is sending the response and the connection is actually released so we are not doing uh, the request constantly waiting for the uh, for the uh, response but rather we are um, waiting for the server event in order to end up this uh, this connection so that that will for sure be less resource greedy which might be a better solution for uh, for our case for sure but still uh, we have this um, uh, we, we need to make this http request uh, in order to subscribe for our event and then wait for it for uh, for for this event to to happen on the server side um, yet another way uh, to op optimize this uh, the solution a little bit more uh, is to uh, have this http periodic polling which is kind of uh, http uh, long polling uh, approach but with additional uh, predefined time gap between the connections that we are uh, sending. So basically such approach would allow us to actually wait uh, for events. And if there are more than one event, uh, if there is more than uh, one event that will happen on the server side, we can consume more uh, than one event uh, during this, this time period. So the next time we will ask for, uh, for, for the, the server for, for the uh, response, uh, this event will be already consumed and we'll wait uh, for the events uh, for the new events that will income. So that will even make this uh, uh, log polling solution uh, a little bit more um, optimized, I'd say, or, op or optimal in this case. But still we have this uh, uh, we, we have this one way uh, half duplex approach which HTTP uh, is following. So we need to actually uh, do this request in order to wait for the response from the from the server or or the uh, yeah for the response with the event uh, from the server side. So that's uh, that's the the case here. So yeah, uh, concerns about those three approaches that we might actually use uh, in, in the in the matter of uh, using the REST API with HTTP. Uh, so we need to do many single connect when many single HTTP connections during our uh, polling uh, in order to be able to sub somehow subscribe on the on the events that might uh, appear on the server side. Uh, each and every connection will be uh, basic. We we'll have the the overhead with headers, authentication, all other stuff that is used in. Each and in, in, in uh, just uh, every uh, HTTP uh, connection that we uh, that we execute against the server. Um, also, uh, this those solutions uh, due to the fact of this um, of this um, ma many single connections existence is in general resource uh, greedy. So uh, yeah, that that might be also some sort of problem and probably from this uh, scalability scalability per, uh, perception it, it might be also a problem uh, the implementation will be complex for this as we need to pro properly um, handle uh, sending messages receiving messages uh, mm, some sort of synchronization is also needed uh, so yeah the implementation will be complex uh, and due to the fact that uh, HTTP is actually a half duplex. So uh, it's actually a one way connection. So we are sending, se we are sending the request and we are, uh, we are waiting for the response from the server. Uh, it makes it like a little bit, not that uh, good idea for this particular problem, uh, I guess, uh, for this, uh, uh, because of this, uh, because of this um, particular um, item that is connected to the uh, HTTP itself. Um, maybe there are some else, uh, but I guess that those uh, uh, those are the the thoughts that I had on on uh, on this approach.
So let's now jump to something else. Uh, maybe that one will be more suitable for our problem. So let's jump to the web sockets. So this particular schema is actually presenting how uh, web sockets uh, approach would be used for our particular chat app case. So we have the same as uh, on on the on the schema with uh, with the uh, REST API. We have two users uh, which uh, actually join the chat room, uh, and they are also uh, establishing a connection to the server, and they are also available. Uh, they are also um, mm, they may also send messages to the server and receive those messages. Uh, from each other, right? So basically, uh, once John will establish connection with the server, will, and that means he will join the the, the room. Uh, he is able to um, send a message to the other uh, to the other user that is currently in the room. Uh, in our uh, example, we have the, the second user, which is Mary, and she's able to also establish connection to the server. And basically, uh, she is able to also uh, send a message to John and receive message from, from John as well in the same room, uh, in the same chat room. Uh, for this particular case, uh, it, is actually, um, um, it is actually possible that we omit existence of the database itself, um, as if we won't need any sort of uh, other um, uh, uh, other reasons why we need to store some uh, additional data for those users, for instance, we might we might uh, only need to have uh, this server that will handle all the connections and will do all the magic in uh, exchanging the messages between users. So let's talk. Uh, WebSocket. Uh, WebSocket connection actually allows us to uh, actually omit this, do I have a new message question, and simply uh, insta instantiate a sort of bidirectional dialogue between users. Uh, because of the nature of the WebSocket itself, as it is a bidirectional uh, protocol, it is a full duplex. It has a, a full duplex communication as well. So it means that um, the communication might be uh, done from point A to point B and vice versa. There is no need to. Uh, uh, there is no need to um, send uh, additional requests each time we need to. We would like to receive the response. It's just a matter of. Um, exchanging the message between one point and another once we have this connection established. And we need only once one TCP connection for such communication to be uh, to be uh, actually possible, which is uh, really nice from the perspective of our use case and our problem, actually. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, the WebSocket connection, basically, uh, WebSocket connect uh, connection um, schema looks more or less like this. It's it might be a little bit uh, um, uh, more more complicated, not more complicated, but there there might be more details involved. But I would like to uh, give you um, like more general overview so to have the understanding. So the client is actually making um, uh, is is making the connection with the server, which is uh, calling which is called a handshake. And basically, after such handshake is done, the B directional connection is now established, and one uh, one side and the other side might send the messages to each other without um, necessity of having yet another connection or, or sending yet another request to to the user. So basically, one connection once it is established, uh, it handles both directions uh, messaging uh, in this particular case. So that's really cool. That's probably uh, makes our uh, problem less uh, complicated to implement because we have already uh, the possibility of handling this uh, bidirectional um, communication without the uh, without the need to uh, without the need to uh, establish 
a new connection each time we do have uh, we we do want to do uh, any operation against the the server uh, or the other uh, or the other user that we uh, that we would like to uh, ask for message uh, for instance right so basically that eases up uh, this one a lot uh, interesting thing is that uh, once we actually would like to establish uh, <clears throat> sorry Uh, the WebSocket connection, we are sending simple HTTP requests. Uh, the, uh, the, the, um, um, the, the, the payload or, or the, the, the way how or the headers, uh, how the headers look for this uh, connection actually is presented uh, also uh, on this uh, very first uh, schema with, with a slash chat. Um, so we uh, are actually sending the upgrade header uh, with value WebSocket, and after server receives such uh, such uh, such payload, uh, it actually should return um, 101 with switching protocols. And right now, after such uh, exchange between client and server, the WebSocket connection is already in place, and that's basically it. And uh, from now on, we can easily use these WebSockets connection in order to communicate with the server uh, and exchange, exchange the data in, uh, in real time without, without uh, necessity of having uh, yet another connection each and every time we need to uh, communicate with the server. Right, so what about Django and channels? Because uh, channels themselves um, are, were basically the response from, from the team that was uh, working on this solution uh, due to the fact that, like, uh, in general, uh, the, the, the very first uh, thought uh, or very first, uh, yeah, very th uh, first uh, thought and very first approach that we uh, might um, somehow um, connect with Django is this synchronous approach. Uh, synchronous um, uh, HTTP requests um, uh, handling and all other stuff that uh, uh, we will do from the perspective of the synchronous application. So the the channels team actually um, came up with such approach as uh, is presented on this uh, particular uh, uh, quote here. So. Channels wraps Django's native asynchronous view support, uh, allowing Django projects to handle not only HTTP, but also protocols that require long-running connections. So WebSockets, MQTT, chatbots, and all other stuff. In our case, the interesting, the, uh, the interesting point is this WebSockets uh, case. So channels are actually, um, Channels are treating actually um, Django with uh, its HTTP uh, support as a bigger hole. So it's it's a nice thing that once we would like to introduce channels and uh, we would like to introduce the WebSocket support, WebSocket protocol support in our application, we don't need to um, build up everything from scratch. I mean, from the scratch, uh, I mean the the Django application that we already maybe have, uh, we already have uh, running in production or, or uh, in any other place. Uh, so uh, channels uh, here are actually adding some, um, yet another layer, I'd say, and we are actually wrapping uh, Django HTTP support with this uh, uh, channels uh, solution itself. Um, so, this particular schema is actually presenting this one. Um, let's maybe uh, have a little, um, uh, a little, a little bit. Uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about this one. So we have this browser, and uh, in very first place, uh, we have this first thing that uh, is actually uh, appearing from the perspective of something that channels are introducing uh, to. Uh, to our application. So basically, uh, in sing uh, in like standard synchronous uh, Django app, 
uh, we have this direct connection or direct, let's say direct, but basically once uh, have, once the HTTP request is handled, it's handled in HTTP, in Django HTTP router. So this protocol route, uh, router is, or router is actually a part that is added by uh, the channels itself. And this particular layer is here to make such solution uh, multi-protocol uh, as we see it right now. So, so channels allows us actually to keep the old fashion or old fashion or synchronous HTTP uh, request approach, allowing us to also introduce uh, long running uh, connections as WebSockets or maybe other protocols that might be also used. Uh, and those are actually handled by this uh, channel layer here. I will maybe that will be more clear once we uh, jump into the details of what actually channel layer, uh, channels layer is uh, on, after a few slides, I guess. But for now, let's uh, just focus on this particular additional layer that is introduced by, by, by channels, which allows us to have both uh, already existing Django views, as we see here, and adding a uh, possibility to have this WebSocket, uh, WebSocket uh, connections at WebSocket uh, protocol support as well. Um, so channels are actually introducing uh, two uh, basic, two not basic, but uh, I, I guess the most important uh, items or um, things that uh, we we might discuss uh, in case of this uh, on this library. So the first one is actually a scope. What a scope is? So scope is actually uh, a kind of um, set of information about a single connection that we are doing against our um, uh, our channels app uh, that that we will prepare. So. Uh, in in case of the, the 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 protocols that we are actually using, so we as as I mentioned before, we might use the HTTP uh, in order to be able to um, like handle the legacy the, the legacy um, synchronous approach, uh, and we might have this new WebSocket connections. So the scope for the HTTP. Um, will last for single requests. So once we will execute the request, we will receive the response, the scope is actually, uh, uh, the scope is closed for, for this particular uh, uh, for this particular particular use case. For WebSocket, uh, the scope is actually, uh, uh, the, the scope lasts for the lifetime of the, of the socket. Uh, there are two things that will make the, uh, the, the scope or will change the scope. So this is the reconnecting of the closure of the of the of the WebSocket connection. So this is important. Each scope, uh, in, in, in each scope, there might be such thing as event that might occur during the life cycle of the scope. Those, those uh, events might be uh, those even might be a series uh, of, of, of events actually. Uh, and um, the types of those events might be Either for the HTTP request, for the HTTP uh, case, it's a single uh, request, and for the WebSocket, it's actually a sen sending a frame with message uh, in order to communicate with uh, with other side of the uh, of the um, of the connection. So this is those are the, the examples that I actually already mentioned. So uh, for the HTTP uh, uh, for the HTTP case, uh, the user makes the HTTP request, as I mentioned. Um, we are actually opening a new uh, scope which contains request path method and headers, all other stuff. Uh, then we are uh, handling this um, this message. So basically channels or any other ASGI application will uh, process uh, uh, HTTP response and send it back to, uh, to, the, to the user. And after the response is delivered, uh, the scope is destroyed. And for the other, uh, for the other example, for, for the WebSocket connection, 
th this is uh, uh, basically this works a little bit uh, different way as this particular example is uh, is the example of long lasting connections, right? So um, the user uh, sends the message, um, it's open somehow, maybe a process. Uh, then, then the usage uh, sends the message back or uh, receives another one until the connection, the WebSocket connection will not be somehow uh, closed or there will be no reconnection. We are thinking about such uh, such uh, connection, uh, such connection is treated as a, as a single scope. And we and, and Charles are actually treating this one as a single scope. So this is very important to, to mention about uh, how it is handled. From this, uh, uh, from perspective of this uh, particular library, so we have uh, events, and those events needs to somehow be handled, or rather, as um, channels uh, documentation uh, says, uh, those should be somehow consumed. So channels are, sorry. Um, Channels are, are introducing something called a uh, consumer, which is a, like a small piece of piece of code. So that will uh, be uh, fired up once the connection will be uh, will be uh, will try to be established um, in the in the in, in order to uh, establish the communication. So um, the decision to which consumer we are actually connecting to. Uh, is based on the routing table, which is also a part of the channels um, configuration, which I will present during the demo itself. itself. Um, so, and this is uh, the example of a simple chat consumer, which contains connect and receive, um, connect and receive and disconnect uh, methods, uh, which, we, which we actually need to, uh, which we actually need to define here. Um, and those those are actually needed for uh, each and every instance of the chat consumer. So we, we need to have those in, in order to properly uh, initialize this uh, this uh, this consumer uh, in the end. So those are mandatory. Yeah, I mentioned this routing table. So basically, uh, I, I'd say it's it's very like. Um, Similar to the the, the 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 approach that that Django already has to uh, the HTTP um, handling, so we are we have the, this URL, URL router and we are defining the paths and um, assigning to those paths uh, the ASGI uh, applications, which are actually those consumers uh, that will consume our events that will uh, that will arrive to this particular uh, to this particular endpoint uh, the cool thing uh, from the perspective of, uh, of of channels is that we are not only limited to one type of the protocol so in the case of Django uh, I mean in the, the in, in case of Django and if we are talking about synchronous usage of Django we are only uh, able to handle uh, handle the HTTP uh, connections with uh, channels, uh, we are actually uh, able to define multiple protocols. So we we might uh, be able to define the HTTP protocol, which is not present here, uh, but we might uh, we might uh, include it here as well. I will also show it uh, in the demo later on. Um, so here we have the the example of the WebSocket protocol, the Telegram protocol. Uh, so yeah, we might so so this multiple pro, uh, protocol support is is really cool thing that and it makes us not limited to uh, only one approach and we have we can have one project supporting many many cases. Um, so if in the matter of uh, in the matter of um, this connection that we are actually uh, uh, we, we are actually establishing with the server. Each and every connection is kind of separate from each other because once we are, let's say, call it a connection, we are actually instantiate uh, the consumer instance, uh, and this uh, particular consumer consumer instance is has its own unique identity, which is called the channel name. By default, 
uh, we are not able to communicate between uh, two uh, instances or two basically processes that uh, are um, somehow handled uh, by, uh, by those consumers. And because of that limitation, uh, channels are introducing yet another abstraction layer, uh, which I mentioned already before on this particular uh, schema, which is called this channel layer. So basically, the, 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 the channel layer uh, allows us to provide the cross-process uh, communication from the perspective of, of, the, of, uh, of possibility of exchanging the messages between uh, like unique um channel names right this is the example of simple um message that might be sent in the consumer in order to be sent outside of the process to be sent to the um to the to the uh, to the other to the other process let's say no i say i have this error here okay what else? Uh, channels are actually providing some sort of Django-like authentication system or authentication approach as well as uh, session handling. Uh, for authentication, for example, we have this uh, sample um, uh, sample code that is introducing the uh, the authentication using uh, uh, with with uh, usage of uh, of channels as well. So. Basically, we are uh, configuring uh, like some defined middleware that is responsible for doing the the uh, the authentication process. So it's cool. It's uh, pretty much straightforward. It's, it's very similar that, uh, to the uh, to the solution that we already have in Django. So that's uh, that's nice uh, for for this particular uh, for this particular problem, for instance. Uh, okay. Uh, now I would like to um, speak a little bit about the real world use case that I had a chance to work with uh, several several years ago. It was uh, before even uh, Django has uh, the possibility to uh, handle uh, any asynchronous uh, communications because this one actually appeared from Django version 3.3.1 or 3.0.1, I, I, I can't remember exactly, but it's it's not that um, old uh, feature for, for Django, but back there in a uh, 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 few, few, few years ago, it was not possible to have this uh, asynchronous communication possible with, with Django. So this channel solution, which actually back then was uh, like a separate uh, library and it was uh, developed by uh, uh, by a team that was not connected with Django. Now, uh, Django channels are a part of Django Foundation, as far as I know. So they are probably uh, closely working with it, with each other in order to um, be able to um, make this solution as com uh, as um, uh, um, as ready for our needs as it might be. I'd say. But let's uh, let's get back to this use case. So the idea was to uh, have a possibility to create uh, uh, and the entity which we called uh, the test line. The test line was basically the 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 device uh, that was somehow in somewhere in in the lab, and this device actually uh, provides uh, provided the uh, the interface, the WebSocket interface that that is interesting. Uh, which uh, we might somehow um, subscribe for and receive uh, the changes from the parameters that were changing on this device. This is very, uh, let's say, uh, simple uh, explanation for this problem. It was a little bit more complex, but let's just focus for this for this particular case that it worked like this. So basically, the idea was to um, uh, to allow user to uh, using the uh, web app uh, web app uh, interface to create some sort of uh, rep representation of the test line uh, that would appear as a dashboard uh, in the user interface once user reaches uh, uh, some uh, some website that that is uh, 
a direct TP pipe for this one. So uh, for this case, uh, we needed to prepare some sort of um, a flow that allows us to create this test line, uh, receive the data from the test line and save it to the, uh, to the database in order to be able to fetch it afterwards and test line removal from uh, from from this particular mm, uh, from this particular uh, example so uh, we had uh, three services uh, it, it it might yeah we had we had three services let's call it like this uh, that were responsible for um, for handling uh, different uh, different things uh, so very first one uh, was a sim was a standard synchronous Django app, which was connect, which was uh, configured with the database. And basically, the we we handle we store there each and every inform each and every information about the the test line, about the the about the data, about the metrics that we received. And then once uh, user uh, would like to fetch the data. Uh, it, we just serve this data using this Django app uh, and Django REST uh, framework, basically, because we, we actually connected Django REST framework as well, because it's it's yeah, it's interesting that also Django REST framework will work with channels uh, without any problem. Um, so the second uh, service, which, uh, which is here uh, mentioned as a Docker consumer, uh, this, particular this particular service was responsible for receiving the request for create for creation of the uh, test line and basically spawning uh, something that is called Docker Swarm service. Docker Swarm is now, I guess, uh, deprecated or not, um, maybe not deprecated, but I, I don't think that the, the, there were uh, many changes uh, done to this solution. So basically this is, uh, a sort of orchestrator like Kubernetes, but uh, it was developed by the by the Docker team. Uh, it was built in uh, uh, solution for the for the Docker, so no no other thing was uh, actually needed in order to be able to fire it up. Uh, it had uh, it had it has probably it has, it still has its own problems, uh, but for for the time being, for the time time period that we were working on this one. It, it, from our perspective, it was a nice solution because it um, uh, it, it 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 actually didn't cost us um, anything besides running one additional uh, comment in in uh, uh, in in Docker actually for, uh, or in the command line uh, using Docker uh, uh, Docker uh, command in order to fire up such um, uh, such services and. Uh, and then the Docker Swarm is actually was actually orchestrating those uh, and placing them uh, in 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 proper uh, in proper hosts uh, where the uh, the resources were actually available. So basically, uh, we were uh, we 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 prepared this Docker consumer and we had this Docker uh, uh, application or uh, with, with Docker API. Um, Facet, I'd say we we actually um, like use Docker API directly. Docker API that is that was available that time in order to spawn those uh, those services and then uh, send the data about those services uh, to the to the database in order to be able to fetch them afterwards. Once such uh, service was introduced and such test line was created, uh, the data started to be uh sent to 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 our uh to our django app and it was uh saved in the database then uh we somehow did switch uh the services so the handling uh of the updates and uh, all the message uh, exchange uh, uh, exchanging between uh, between the test line which was uh, which uh, actually was uh, sending the updates on the parameters that were changed that were changed uh, to to our um, Django app and to our database was handled by this uh, test line consumer, which was another uh, channels um, in uh, channels uh, application uh, that was introduced by us in our in our case. And from time from now on, this application was uh, responsible for uh, communication between the test line and our uh, Django app and our uh, and 
our database, uh, basically we, we were storing the data in order for the user to be able to fetch this data and display it on the dashboard. Uh, the next step for us uh, back then was to introduce a full WebSocket communication in a real time. So basically we tried to replace this storing the uh, storing the uh, the data inside the database uh, but sending the updates directly to the user but uh, unfortunately I left the the, the project uh, on the time being when it was actually um, uh, somehow even thought about and uh, yeah I didn't have I didn't uh, have a chance to uh, work with this additional feature that, uh, that might be uh, introduced for this particular example. Yeah, so I guess that's all for, uh, for the presentation. Uh, and now I would like to focus or present a sort of small demo app, which is not something that might be uh, probably not that, uh, let me just share my, Green once again with my ID. Okay, um, so so first of all, um, the the idea is, as I said, that uh, channels are actually some sort of extension for already existing Django, uh, for already existing Django app as as we have it right now. So. For this particular uh, for this particular demo, uh, I introduced um, yeah I created actually a Django project which a Django project which is uh, called my site, and then I introduced a Django app which is called uh, which is called Chat. So basically, uh, after this one, uh, I am able to uh, yeah we we are able to actually see that we have basically the same stuff that is already present in, in the case of, Django, of uh, standard synchronous Django app or asynchronous Django app. So we have views, we have, we have URLs like tests, models, et cetera. So nothing changes from, from this perspective. Um, also from the perspective of the master, we have the, we have, we have settings, we have URLs, we have uh, WSGI, so standard, a synchronous communication uh, uh, configuration as well. So basically, uh, once we are starting this uh, uh, this project, it, we are starting it from scratch, and we are doing all the same steps as we would uh, we, we would do for the uh, standard Django application, right? First thing that uh, actually might be uh, that we actually need to um, we need to do in order to be able to. Um, uh, to introduce, uh, sorry, to introduce this uh, this channel solution, uh, is to have those um, channels uh, channels library installed for, uh, beside Django, obviously, uh, with the uh, Daphne add-on. Uh, Daphne is a sort of ASGI implementation that is actually developed by uh, channels team. So basically, uh, it's still the ASGI server. So the ASGI server uh, is actually responsible for handling asynchronous communication. Uh, it's not mandatory to use Daphne, but uh, highly recommended from the perspective of the channels team, as they are uh, uh, as they are working closely with uh, with this particular ASGI solution. So we need to have those two configured. Uh, and installed uh, from the perspective of the requirements. Um, then in our Django settings app, uh, we need to have also um, proper configuration that we need to um, add in order to have this one, uh, in order to have channels working. So first one uh, is this Daphne um, uh, app that we actually uh, installed uh, 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 we insert together with channels. Uh, this one is already uh, our 
chat app, which is basically the same thing as we do for standard uh, Django app. We need to uh, we need to provide this one here as well. So we we do it uh, we do it like this uh, the same as as for the uh, for, for the standard Django app. And for uh, for uh, for the other change that that needs to be introduced here, uh, we need to uh, create. Uh, we, we, we need to adjust the ASGI com configuration in order to introduce uh, channels like configuration uh, for this protocol type router, which I presented uh, in, 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 uh, in, in the presentation on this, on this schema. So, so this uh, protocol router that is responsible for, um, for now at least, uh, for this part of the, uh, of, of the demo, only for handling the uh, Django app and handling the HTTP requests uh, by the uh, by uh, that that we will make against the uh, Django app. So this is how the configuration for this one actually uh, how uh, configuration for this one actually works. Uh, I prepared also some sort of very simple index page. Uh, I'm not that good in the uh javascript uh probably so this one is rather uh yeah very basic stuff but still it allows us to uh, uh to somehow present simple uh simple page with some sort of uh, uh input uh, uh inputs um and and uh, and button that we might just use for the execution of sending the message for instance right so for now on once we have uh, all those things in place so we have this uh, template that is prepared for uh, uh, in in the templates directory uh, we have uh, our basic view configure so we have this um, index here uh, which uh, tells us that we, we we would like to render this uh, this index HTML file. Uh, now we can actually try to start this application. Uh, so so let me. Uh, <clears throat> right. So the application is actually up and running without any without any issues. Uh, as for the proper configuration of the of the of the SGI and channels, we should see such information as we see here. So starting SGI Daphne uh, log. That means that uh, the configuration of channels was introduced properly, and there was no issues uh, with uh, running this application. And for now on, uh, once we actually try to uh, fetch the the URL with the chat uh, with the chat um, window let me just uh, let me just share it Yeah, so this particular one will will not work for uh, for for now at least uh, because of the fact that uh, we don't have. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, this is something that. Yeah, okay. So we have this uh, uh, we have this uh, very first uh, uh, page that and and endpoint that we are actually reaching right now. So this is basically something that uh, that is rendered upon this. Uh, upon this uh, particular uh, template, and uh, as you can see, uh, right now, if we provide any sort of input here, there will be no uh, there will be no um, proper response. There will be no page found for from from the perspective of Django because of the fact that we are actually we do not have. Uh, we do not have support for creating uh, uh, chat rooms in order to be 
uh, in order to be uh, to be entered. Sorry, I, I mentioned about the message. It was uh, all about the chat room that we would like to enter, right? So the next thing that we would need to do is to provide the possibility to have such uh, uh, such rooms uh, present and. In order to do that, we need to introduce a few, change, uh, few changes uh, uh, in, in, from the perspective of our app. So first of all, um, we need to um, provide some sort of uh, additional um, uh, some sort of additional uh, so. Yeah, okay, so maybe, uh, yeah, for, for this room, actually, we need to, uh, yeah, we need to provide uh, some additional uh, some additional code for handling, uh, sending messages inside the room that we will, uh, we will actually join. Uh, so this particular uh, code is responsible for, uh, for allowing, uh, displaying the messages and sending those upon hitting the, the send button. Uh, next thing is, uh, for us to configure the proper uh, the proper uh, URL patterns that we need to configure uh, inside our uh, inside our uh, chat apps. So here we have a yet, an yet another um, a yet another thing that we needed to add uh, in order to be able to display properly our our room. Uh, so basically, after uh, adding those three little changes and also introducing uh, this view in, 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 in Django views, uh, with a, we will be able to render uh, our room after we will uh, actually would like to uh, enter this room, right? So let's try this one. Uh, so far so good. Um, so, Let's um, okay. Let's get back to this chat room. And right now we are um, yeah. So as you can see, this uh, chat room is actually available right now. Uh, we can see also in uh, in the in the logs what what actually happened uh, once we reach this uh, URL with our uh, name of the room. So we have this, sorry, very first HTTP request, which I mentioned before as well, which uh, was to establish the WebSocket connection. The WebSocket connection handshaking is, was executed here, and we have the WebSocket connection up and running as this particular uh, log tells us right now, but from the perspective of uh, sending anything, as we as we try to send anything, uh, the message will will appear here. But if we will join this chat room from other tab, for instance. Yeah, we are sending the message, but this message is actually not uh, not displayed in uh, in the other tab in 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 the other uh, user tab or uh, or any other user window that will be used for this one, right? So we need to solve this one in order to be able to uh, exchange those messages between between the uh, between the the users, right? So for this one, um, we need to introduce a few more interesting uh, interesting things that uh, that are basically needed from our perspective. So as I mentioned, each and every uh, like connection is uh, some sort of uh, is, is is actually an instance um, that is. Um, uh, is an instance that is actually um, an instance of the cause of a WebSocket consumer. In our case, we will create uh, something that is uh, actually called a chat consumer, which will be responsible for 
for preparing the uh, for preparing the uh, connection once we actually receive the connect uh, uh, the connect uh, connect request. Uh, also, we need to introduce uh, this connection handling, uh, receiving the message and sending message to the uh, from the from the room group, which I will describe a little bit uh, more uh, later on. Um, so, uh, so right now, uh, if we are talking about uh, uh, if we are talking about joining the same room, so basically exchanging the uh, the messages between two uh, two instances of the chat consumer, we need to uh, use uh, we need to use this channel layer, which is all available in the scope of the of the uh, consumer as well. Uh, so we are able to send the message. Uh, so we are able to basically first join the group and then send the messages um, to the group. So we uh, we are allowing the communication between two instances of the chat consumer which for our case will be each and every user that will connect to this particular um, to this particular um, uh, chat. Uh, one more thing uh, that is uh, uh, important here. So in order for channels to be able to be uh, executed, we need to uh, introduce something that uh, is uh, basically the way how uh, channels are handled in uh, sorry uh, our channel layers are handled in, in channel in channels uh, library uh, we need to uh, introduce uh, 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 we need to introduce something that is called channel redis which is basically based on the redis solution it allows us to uh, create this channel layer uh, in order to uh, enable this cross process communication there are uh, some other solutions, but uh, channels uh, documentation mentions this one as, as a default. So, in order to have this one up and running, we need to uh, we need to like start it up for for sure. Uh, so we have this uh, Redis instance uh, running, and once this is actually uh, this is actually uh, done. Uh, we can just simply uh, try out our to run our app and check if those um, those messages um, are handled properly right now. So let's refresh those. And this is room one. So we are sending message test one. It appeared here and it appeared in the second row. And then we are sending message test two. It should appear in our uh, in our let's say scope of 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 the user that uh, had this particular uh, room open and saying uh, it's served uh, to, to to another user that is on on the other side. So that one is actually. Uh, working pretty well for this one. And it's worth mentioning as well that um, we are not using any sort of uh, any sort of uh, database here. Everything is basically handled by the channels app itself. The connection, the, the message exchange, uh, the, the message uh, uh, exchanging, uh, this is all happening uh, in the uh, in the scope of uh, of the channel solution as we have as we have it uh, right now. Um, so uh, yeah, so here uh, I added also some sort of uh, simple logging, which basically uh, which basically allows us to uh, to see what message we actually received in the receive uh, in the receive method here. Also, once uh, the user. Uh, uh, is uh, trying to connect to the to the chat uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the chat and to the public room. Uh, we also uh, uh, mentions uh, we are also mentioning this one here, so we can also see uh, how does it look like. And uh, for now, as we see, we have this uh, WebSocket uh, connection established. Let's uh, uh, let's try one thing.
Yeah, you see, once we actually close the uh, the the uh, once we close the tab, uh, the connection was was lost. So the scope of uh, of the channels, the 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 thing that I mentioned before, now is actually uh, destroyed. So once we would uh, like to somehow, um, uh, uh, we would like to somehow uh, use this um, channel name uh, that that we were connecting before. Uh, now it will the, the, now now it, the identif identifier this cha uh, channel name will be different because of the fact that the scope was destroyed and it will be recreated once the uh, web socket con connection will be reestablished once we for instance open the the browser or we will actually establish the connection, uh, the web socket connection itself. Okay, um, I guess that more or less this is it. Uh, I, I guess this is a really uh, a simple introduction. There are way more uh, things to be discussed about channels and the possibilities that this library is providing. Uh, but still, I guess, um, um, yeah, it's it's really it's really uh, it's really um, nice thing to consider if we are uh, if we are talking about um, necessity of uh, hand of of hand of or possibility uh, of handling the WebSocket connections uh, even without introducing the direct connection between the the web browser and the backend, but uh, maybe between the uh, the, the 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 processes the application in our inside our backend right so to in order to synchronize something or provide the real time updates uh, I guess that this in combination with Django uh, app that is already in place might be a, a good solution and 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 something that might be worth uh, worth checking and um, considering so yep yeah, that would be it thank you.